You guys have been overweight China. Yep. That hasn't worked out. No, that's right. What do you guys think about it now? Good. So the, the view that we've taken on China, <laughs> okay. straight to the point, right? Yeah. Good. Um, the view that we've taken on China for a long time is this market is a flat line. If you look over the last say, 10 years or so, we're pretty much at levels where we were, right? Yeah. So it's a market that you trade. It's not a market, like the Indian market the last, last 10 years has gone gradually moved higher. You, you bought 10 years ago, you would have been very good and done very well. The US market the same. China is a different sort of market. You play in it very differently. Also, the stocks are moving all over the place, so you can actually do that quite easily in China. So that's what you need to do. So when internet was moving and powering ahead to, what is it now, three years almost ago, mm. um, and everybody piled in, we were willing to take the opposite side and said, listen, let's be careful here because ultimately we'll probably go back to some sort of mean. Now, that happened and then we, uh, we felt, in particular early this year, that things are looking a little bit better. Some stimulus will come through. Now, that hasn't really worked out yet, but I'm, I'm willing to be a little bit more patient here. Let's see what comes out. That, that We have a new economics team announced in February if they're going to come through with some, some more ideas and announcements over the next couple of weeks. But mm. everybody's on the wait already. Um, sentiment is, is really That's poor. true. That's I, right. I, I, there was a China hedge fund manager. She, she had some interesting Very comments on, on WeChat about basically global investors are are really just too pessimistic. I think she said, taken together, they are a bunch of aimless flies, which is kind of a viral <laughs> okay. now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, is, is the foreign investment sentiment really now a really dragging negative force on this market? It's funny you mentioned so. I have a colleague of mine, one of my uh, team members, who went to China, she's Chinese, for a holiday. Yeah. And uh, she came back, and she's a credit specialist. And she has been always quite careful with credit. There's a lot going on in the property sector. And she came back, and she said... It didn't feel as bad as we thought it to be in Hong Kong. So maybe your hedge fund uh, friend there has maybe he's got a point to, uh, to make. But an interesting, just a data point to make. We're halfway through the earnings season in China. So um, a lot of companies still going to come out over the next two weeks with, with numbers. It keeps you busy. Um, but the earnings growth numbers have come down from 25% to 23%. 23% is not the number you would attach to the Chinese market if you look at the performance of it at the moment. Mm. We've had some of the larger internet names coming through with either better or in-line uh, results so far. It doesn't mean that over the next two weeks we're going to have fantastic results, but to assume that China is not going to grow this year in terms of earnings yeah. is probably also well, well, do we get, too bad. Do we get another round of downward revisions is the question, yeah. because the last quarter has been bad. Yeah, the last quarter has been bad, um, and th there is simply risk, because the good companies typically go and report first, and it's, it's, it's a lot of other companies that do it in, in the very last moment. So we might still get disappointments coming through. And the analysts are really all looking for a Q2 kind of recovery in earnings. So if that does materialize, they might have to downgrade. But still, we're downgrading from 23%. So let's say it ends up by the end of the year, even 15%, which is quite substantially lower than where we are at the moment, that's still pretty good, given, given the sentiment that we have, right? So let's... Let's keep uh, uh, the, the, the lack of confidence is paramount, and that, that comes from the property side of things. And then you, you're, we're waiting for stimulus, but then you see in that data the budget deficit shrinking. Yeah. I mean, it's shrinking by more than a third so far this year. Yeah. I'm just telling you, the cavalry is not coming in no. terms of fiscal spending to yeah. get them out of the mess. So what is going on here? Because we keep on waiting for big steps, a bazooka. We're not going to get that, it seems. No, no. So China has, is, is, is a difficult position in a sense because on the one hand, a large part of the economy, which is infrastructure and property, is about, say, 35, 40 percent of your economy. They don't really want to go and stimulate that. That's been done in the past. That's where the bad debt has ended up. So they don't want to do that. What you want to stimulate is high-end tech, fuel, food, EVs, uh, renewables, these sort of things, right? Mm. But that's 8% of your economy. So that can grow, but it can't pull the overall economy. So your growth numbers will continue to, to come down. That is a natural consequence of it. That's problematic, and they probably have to do more, but they don't want to maybe use all their stimulus in one go at the very beginning of this process. There needs to be debt rescheduling taking place. So I, my suspicion is they're going to do this very, very carefully.